Hello everyone, welcome to Pumpkin Horror. Now today I want to touch base on some of my horror figures. I have three Michael Myers figures. If I get them confused it's because they all look the same. But I'll try to do the best that I can in you know, naming them. Um, so we'll get into those. We'll get into this figure here and i got two other figures that I want to show you as well. Okay, These are miscellaneous ones because I don't have a huge collection of them like Michael Myers. I have, like I said, three of them, but I don't have a huge amount like I do with my Jasons or my Xenomorphs or my Predators. I got quite a few of those. Those I can create, uh, you know, separate videos based on those. But these guys here I just don't have enough, so we're going to put them all together in one video. With this in mind, we're going to talk about this guy here. McFarland Toys makes this particular Frankenstein. All right. I forgot what monster series this one comes from, but they have a huge collection of these things. And I'm seriously thinking about looking up and see if I can find some more of these particular figures and start collecting McFarlane as well as the NECA figures. Mezco, I kind of hesitate on them because they're fantastic figures, but they are pricey. They are a lot more expensive than these guys are, okay? So you got to stay within your realm of uh, pricing. But anyway, long story short. Uh, let's get into this particular figure. I'm going to shut the turntable down so we can get some close-up looks of this Frankenstein. Alright, pull the camera back. And grab Mr. Frankie. Alright. Let's start with the face. Very cool looking. I'll tell you one thing about this figure here. Uh, McFarlane really put a lot of effort into their details. Very cool looking. Look at that. Every last inch of this thing is ridiculously detailed. They put so much effort into this stuff. Look at this. That's cool right here. Alright. Scarring everything. It's fantastic looking figures. Nowadays, not so much. They don't put as much detail, but they're a lot cheaper too. So keep that in mind. If they were ridiculously detailed like this here, I'm sure they would be higher priced. In some cases, okay? Because that's what they usually do. They, they charge you a decent amount for something that's highly detailed. Like your X-Plus figures based on Godzilla. Those are almost movie accurate. Uh, they are up there in price because of that. The arm blade. I think that's really cool. Okay, And the detail on the blade too. They really put a lot of effort into this stuff. <clears throat> You'll hear me clearing my throat every so often. I apologize about that. The skeleton is a cool, cool factor about this thing. Look at that. Move it up close so you can see the detail of this thing. Look how nice that thing is. It's ridiculously cool. It just hangs there off his back. <clears throat> Again, a lot of chains, okay? The shoulder harness. That's freaking cool. Anyway, that is the Frankenstein from the McFarlane. Uh, it's a monster series, but I can't remember which one it is. Monster series six, maybe I'm not sure. Uh, but this is a very cool looking figure. Okay. All right. Enough about him. Let's move him off to the side. And now we're going to get into this guy here, Mr. Kruger. Now, unfortunately, and there's a reason why I don't. I am a fan of A Nightmare on Elm Street, but he is not my all-time favorite character. I only have one of these guys, and there are several NECA figures out there um, that they have, but I haven't really locked in the ideal of actually collecting these. But I do like Freddy Krueger, but not as much to actually collect them, if that makes any sense. Uh, I do got one because he's a horror figure. He's part of the collection for that reason. But anyway, he is like fifth down the line when it comes to franchise horror figures. Hellraiser is my number one all-time favorite uh, franchise. I always love Pinhead and the Cenobites. The Tortured Souls is another um, reason why I liked uh, the Hellraiser series. Even though the Tortured Souls are not actually part of the Cenobite or the Leviathan uh, realm, uh, they are... In a different part of uh, hell, a different realm of hell, 
they're in the primordium they're completely different characters fantastic characters we'll touch base on that in the next video as I got like four of those characters there's probably quite a few of those out there but some of them are like eh, I don't want to buy that that doesn't look good anyway but anyway long story short I got four of them off of eBay and I got them for like 60 bucks they were not in their clamshells but they were in pristine condition fantastic condition so I'm not complaining because the actual Lucidique right now uh, which is part of the tortured souls is probably the most popular one of the bunch she's running around two hundred dollars in some aspects in some areas okay it's ridiculous how much they charge and people will pay prices for that but I ended up getting those guys for like sixty bucks but anyway long story short Hellraiser is part of the um, uh, the Torture Souls for me because they're all Clive Barker characters they're all connected in that way so I do collect them for that very reason Clive Barker is very cool when it comes to horror movies and stuff and as far as I know Clive Barker end up getting back to copyrights uh, I think the American versions of um, the Hellraiser series so he owns the copyrights to all the movies and the characters, as far as I know. Don't quote me on it, but I know he's got some copyrights to the franchise. I'm thinking it's the American release. If that's the case, then Dimension Films no longer owns um, uh, the Hellraiser franchise. Which, in my opinion, the Hellraiser franchise, they totally destroyed it. They didn't appreciate it. They gave them real small budgets and ended up pushing out these crappy movies. You know, after a while. Don't get me wrong. The majority of them were pretty decent, but they got stupid after a while. All right? Judgment, they did a pretty decent job on that. That was okay, okay? Even though it wasn't Doug Bradley. Now, in all honest, uh, my uh, honest opinion about Doug Bradley, he's up there in age. I think he's done when it comes to Pinhead. What they need to do when it comes to the reboot is actually do um, a female version because in the Hellbound Heart, okay, hang on. And we're going to shut this down and switch out the battery. Hang on. Be right back. Okay, we're back. I had to switch out the battery because they don't seem to last very long. Maybe an hour, hour and a half at the most. And I'm sorry I'm dragging this out, but I do like to talk about the Hellraiser franchise. And we'll get into the other uh, franchises. Then we'll talk about this figure here. Alright. Back to Hellraiser, okay. Again, Judgment, they did a, an okay job on that. It was pretty decent. With Doug Bradley and the Reboot series... He's done as far as I'm concerned because if they try to make him up because he's older and his face and his jowls are um, a little bit different now, it would be hard to kind of um, cover that up and you know give him a, a young look unless they totally CGI him. And they're not going to do that because that's a lot of money. But long story short, they are in fact rebooting the franchise. Um... In my opinion, I think they need to actually do a female version because in the Hellbound Heart, uh, the Hell Priest is an ambiguous character. They don't know if it's female or male. So in my opinion, they need to switch gears and do a female version because I actually went on YouTube and actually seen some fantastic looking images of some female uh, versions of the Pinhead. They look absolutely fantastic, okay? I would love to see them do a female version of the Pinhead. But anyway, long story short, with the uh, Torture Souls, it is in fact my all-time favorite uh, franchise. Then Friday the 13th is my second favorite because I love Jason. The mask, I got a bunch of paintball masks hanging on my wall. As well as the traditional uh, Jason mask. I don't collect the masks because they can get you, uh, it can be uh, pretty expensive. And then after that would be the actual Halloween series. I only got three of them um, because, you know... Uh, NECA wise there's not really many decent figures out there other than the 1978 version I think which I think this is don't quote me on it I could be wrong about this and the 2018 version I would love to get a hold of the Rob, Rob Zombie versions a lot of people don't like those I like them I, I like uh, Tyler Maine as Michael Myers he was super vicious and, and I think people didn't like that part I think they just want him to be a Stone Cold Killer just slash and stab, uh, stab people and not be as violent as uh, Tyler Maine's version was but I like it okay that's what I liked about the movie plus it was huge okay and a lot of people didn't like it because of all those factors you know you got your traditionals when it comes to the, um, the Halloween or any kind of franchise especially with this guy here 
Freddy Krueger. A lot of people didn't like the 2010 version with Jackie, Hur uh, Jackie Earl Haley, who in fact played in the Bad News Bears back in 1977, I think it was. Cool movie back in the day. I used to watch that all the time. But anyway, uh, he's a good actor, and he was also in the new RoboCop movie, 2012. Um, he ends up playing uh, Freddy Krueger in that again. People didn't like it because I think it's because of the dark nature. It wasn't comical like your traditional uh, Nightmare on Elm Street uh, movies were. So a lot of people just didn't like it because of that. But I like the movies, okay? I'm just one of those people that actually appreciates those particular movies. Long story short, Freddy Krueger, okay, is not one of my favorite characters. Now when it comes to uh, Halloween, that comes in third. And then in fourth would be the actual... Um, Child's Play movies, Chucky, I love Chucky, he's cool as shit, right, but anyway, he comes in fifth, F Freddy Krueger does, The Nightmare on Elm Street, it's not an insult, they're great movies, okay, but it's just, to me, they're not my favorite, put it that way, okay, but anyway, let's look at this guy here, they're, it does come with accessories, obviously they're not here, because I got them in a bag, sitting in the closet, if I ever need to pull them out, I know exactly where they're at, okay, Mr. Krueger, Put him right up there. Hey, how you doing? He's got his fedora, and I think it does come off. Yeah, see? Oh, lost my stand. But not to fear. We will put him back on there. All right. I love the fedora, the Christmas sweater. Very cool. Obviously, the hands, the blades. Very cool. All right. I might think about actually getting one of the gloves from probably Trick or Treat Studios, but I gotta check out the pricing on it. But I think it would be cool to have just to have the actual glove, okay? And as you can see, this is a very cool figure. Articulation wise, uh, it bends at the shoulders, elbows, obviously the hands, okay? They do twist. Same with this one here, okay? And the head does twist. Along with the fedora, it does pop off. Hang on, put it back on it. It does twist back and forth. Uh, torso wise, not much movement there. Alright, so it does not have 32 points of articulation because otherwise it, the torso would turn. But this is a smaller figure, so I wouldn't necessarily think it would need it anyway. Uh, it does twist at the hips, it's a little stiff, okay. And it does bend at the knees as well as the feet here. All right, which is cool, okay? Well, that's pretty much it on the articulation on this figure. That is the only Freddy Krueger that I do have, okay? And I might collect more, don't quote me on it. But like I said, it's not one of my all-time favorites. He's a cool character, but just not my favorite, okay? When I watch the movies, they're okay. What I do like is Freddy vs. Jason. I think he did a fantastic job in that, Robert Englund. Uh, he's a great actor, okay? He's played in a bunch of other movies as well. Uh, but, like I said, he's, he's a cool character, don't get me. The movies are cool too, don't get me wrong. I enjoy watching them, but they're just not my favorite part that way. I'm sorry to disappoint people. But anyway, that's my Freddy Krueger. Enough about him. Let's move on. Let's get into the Michael Myers. Now, this one here is, I believe, the 2018 version and he stands on his own quite well, okay? Let me pull him in a little bit. Alright, this is the cloth uniform version, okay? In most cases, when you get NECA figures based on Michael Myers, it's all solid plastic, which is, you know, different. These are, in fact, a little bit cheaper than your traditional NECA figures based on Michael Myers. I think I end up getting him for, like, $32, I think. And in most cases, they're a little bit higher priced, okay? Maybe I got that a little bit cheaper, I'm not sure. And I think I got it from Target a long time ago. But anyway, let's go ahead and give him a look at. Now, you notice that the, the uniform, okay? He's got the collar up. You know, you got to have the collar up, okay? Because he looks cool with the collar up. Now... The mask in itself, I believe it is the 2018 version. I could be wrong about that. But I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Okay. Now, let's see the knife. Okay. 
articulation wise it's standard just like any other uh, NECA figure except the uniform is different that's the only thing that's different um, the, the arms they bend at the shoulders they move at the shoulders elbows and at the wrists and now torso wise it does twist as you can see okay and same with the hips and the knees as well as the feet they do twist okay let's turn it around and give you a look at the back all right so, all right. so what I'm going to do here I'm going to set him off to the side just make sure he's standing right because I don't want him to fall all right, hang on. There we go. That's it. This Perfecta Mente. Okay, now, let's get into this guy. This, I believe, is the 1978 version because of the pumpkin. Oops. Stand up there, buddy. So I'm assuming this is the 1978 version, the very first one. I could be wrong about that. It could be Halloween, too, but there is no blood coming from the mask. And I don't think there's a hole on the side of the mask. There is, in fact, Trick or Treat Studios does do two separate masks based on the 1978 version. One is called The Shape and the other one is called The Boogeyman. There is slight differences between the two masks, but they are, in fact, the same 1978 William Shatner version of the mask. Except the Boogeyman version has the hole in the neck, okay, and the shape don't, okay. But anyway, I believe this is the 1978 version because of the pumpkin, and I believe this also go, comes with it. There is other accessories to these things, okay? And then I'm going to show you my other ones here. Now, if I get these wrong, don't be afraid to correct me, but be nice about it, okay, guys? <laughs> anyway, let's pull him off, and I'll show you the pumpkin. And the other accessory that I have here, all right, and then we'll show you the figure as well as the tombstone. So we'll start with the tombstone. Now I'm not saying that this tombstone goes with this figure. It goes with one of them. I'm just not sure which one it is. But anyway, let's show you what that looks like here. And you read the writing on the wall here, guys. Let me get my hand out of the way so you can actually see it. All right. Turn it around, and it's a completely blank sp uh, slate. But that is a tombstone. Jason also has one for his, I think, for his mother, too. All right. Our beloved daughter, Judith. Because Michael decided to go ahead and stab her ass. All right, now this guy right here is the actual hammer. It's hammer time, guys. All right, let me just... Get that shadowing out of the way. You'll be able to see it a little bit. I don't know if you can see it or not. There we go. Turn it around. That's what she looks like. I've yet to figure out the sh uh, the lighting here, just so I can make these reviews perfect. But every so often, I get the angles, and it's like, ah, oh, it's not right. All right, now this guy here is the actual pumpkin. So, if you guys know which one is, um, which version it is, if it's the 78 or the uh, Halloween 2, let me know. Okay, but I'm pretty sure. Now, you hear it? Unfortunately, it's, if, this would actually light up, but the battery ran dead on me. So, I've yet to get a new battery for it, but that's the pumpkin that comes with that figure. All right, as you can see in the back, you can switch out the battery. It's more like a watch battery, okay? And you just hit this... Um, stem and it's supposed to light up all right enough about that let's get into the actual figure we'll pop him off the stand there we go okay michael myers now i believe like i said it is the 1978 version but if it's not let me know in the comment section below okay guys it's been a while since i did these videos Okay, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Again, with the articulation, they're both the same in the shoulder, elbow, and wrist, as well as the legs are the same way. 
torso wise this one does twist a little bit I think hang on for a second here yeah I believe it does yeah it does okay just a little bit but it's very tight if you try to move it it's just best to leave it alone because obviously you just want to stand them up and look, make them look good okay the knife okay hang on for a second here there we go there's no blood on this knife All right. because he hasn't done no stabbing yet but anyway that's Michael Myers I believe it's the 1978 version but I could be wrong about that if I am, just let me know in the comment section below, guys. Okay? I gotta put this back on the stand. Alright, there it is. Could barely see it, guys. Hang on, guys. Hang in there. Being difficult right now. There we go. We are back in action here, guys. Now, let me straighten them up. There we go. Put the hammer down and the pumpkin. And then we're going to move on to the next one here. There we go. Whoa, where you think you Whoa, where are you going? Okay, hold on there, guys. I just ran into a problem here. My pumpkin decided to roll away on me. There it is. We're almost there, guys. Hang on. Okay. Now this guy here we'll put with him. Okay, now this, I believe, is the 2018 version. I could be wrong about that, like I said. If I am, just let me know what I did. I said wrong, okay? Because it's been a while since I actually got these, so I don't honestly know which is which. Because I'm not totally 100% familiar with uh, the actual masks and the suits and stuff like that. Not as compared to like uh, Jason or Pinhead or any of those others. Those I'm totally familiar with. But this one here is a little bit different. But anyway, I want to show you the pumpkin first. It's really cool looking. As you can see, he's got a little crack. Okay, now it's got a battery compartment. I mean a hinge, not a battery compartment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this. You can actually pull it open and pow! The skull! Is that cool or what? Okay, put him off to the side here. I'm going to look at Michael here. Again, the same articulation as the other figures. All right. All right. Sorry about the lighting. All right. So looking at this, it kind of looks like the 1978 version, but like I said, it's confusing. Uh, the masks are, you know, drastically different in all the movies. There are only certain um, masks that I do like to collect. From Trick or Treat Studios, I do have the 1978 version of the shape. I don't have the Boogeyman version. And I also got the 2018 version from Trick or Treat Studios. That mask in itself um, is actually um, too small for my head because, you know, I got a big head. And if you do have a big head, my suggestion is, see those little blood spots? I think it's where he got shot or something. Yeah, it's like three shots there. So I'm not really sure what this movie's. I'm not. I don't think it's the 1978 version. I think it's the 2018 version. But then again, they do look. I'm not sure. I'm thinking maybe this one's the 2018 right here, and this one could be the uh, 1978. I don't know. But anyway, long story short, these are in fact my Michael Myers, along with this guy here. Okay, pull that back so you can see them. Okay, and I got uh, one more figure to show you, and we're going to talk about that here in a second. But like I said, when it comes to the Michael Myers figures, uh, hang on for a second, guys. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
Okay. All right, we'll just shut that off real quick. All right. All right. Like I said, when it comes to the Michael Myers figures, there are experts out there. If you come across this video and you know which is which, you know, don't be afraid to let me know. But again, just try to be nice about it because I know there's some people out there that are really condescending. And I don't need all that because I'll just delete the comment. I don't got time for none of that. But anyway, just let me know which ones are which because, I'm, like I said, I'm not totally familiar. If I looked at, look at the masks, yes and no. Uh, like I said, there are some people out there that are really experts when it comes to Michael Myers and the masks. Okay? If you come across what these are, just let me know what they are in the comment section below. But anyway, let's move these guys out of the way and get into the last one. Alright. I do like these figures. I think they're very, very cool. I like Michael Myers. He takes a more serious tone, the movies in themselves, as compared to Jason. Now, a lot of people will argue, and they want to try to match these guys up, Jason versus Michael Myers. And I really honestly don't think that would be a smart thing, because Jason is supernatural, where Michael Myers is not. Now, some people might question that, but uh, there's no actual proof that Michael um, has gone through what Jason has gone through. Jason has gone through hell and done all kinds of crazy stuff and he's died an ungodly amount of times and always seen to come back. Michael, they say he has died but he keeps coming back but he's not supernatural. When it comes to the fight and stuff like that, in my personal opinion, I think Jason would definitely take out Michael Myers rather easily. I don't mean that as an insult. It's only because of what he is, especially when you got the Savini Jason, um, you know, the Hell Jason that they got. That comes, he's all black and stuff. He's really cool looking. Or Jason that went to hell. And he's gone through a lot of stuff as compared to Michael Myers is a straightforward serial killer that has no emotions. That is what's cool about Michael. He just kills you randomly and don't give a fuck. <laughs> He's absolutely badass. I love Michael Myers because of that. Now, when it comes to the actual movies in the way his character is, when he was younger, in fact, let me put this up here, so we'll be talking about this guy here in a second. Uh, that is Darkness, or the Lord of Darkness from uh, Legend uh, 1985. It was, in fact, Tom Cruise's very first movie. We'll talk about that in a second. Michael Myers... When he was younger, according to the Rob Zombie movies, and as well as the 1978 movie, obviously he had some serial killing issues. Because he was very curious about death, I guess he just started with something small and worked his way up. That's what serial killers do. I think psychologically, they go through a change or they do something that most people wouldn't even think about doing. They actually take that step forward because of the curiosity and they seem to be excited about it for the most part and that's what Michael Myers is he likes killing and that's what he does okay and also that whole Laurie Strode being his sister I don't agree with that but anyway it is what it is um, I think for the most part um, I don't totally disagree with it because I think when they were younger Laurie was part of the family but anyway well no we're not gonna get into that but anyway I do like the Halloween movies, okay? But anyway, let's get into the Lord of Darkness here. Now, keep in mind when I do these horror figures, I do like talking about them, so that's why these videos are quite lengthy. I hope you guys don't mind that. Lord of Darkness, okay? This is a McFarlane figure. I got this about maybe six, six months ago. It's been out for a while. All right, there is other variants of this uh, particular figure from McFarland uh, Toys. Uh, they are as high as 80 bucks a piece. This one here in itself, I end up getting for like 60 bucks on eBay because I wanted it. Okay, I love the Lord of Darkness. It's a Tim Curry character. He actually went through some nightmarish situations with the uh, costume. He literally ripped it off because he got petrified of being, you know, closed on closed off with the mask and everything and the makeup but eventually he made it through Tim Curry is such a seriously good actor and I'm hoping he's doing well for the most part 
But he did a fantastic job in that movie. If you ever seen that movie, you know what I'm talking about. The deep voice, everything. The way he acts. It's a fantastic movie. The movie in itself is very fantastical. It's very uh, fantasy-like, okay? When it comes to Ridley Scott, he did a fantastic job. It really went overboard on the fantasy part of it. It's very cool, in my opinion. Some people, again, they don't like the movie, but it is what it is. Lord of Darkness is probably the best thing about it. There are other characters that come out of that movie. Um, I'm sure there's figures out there based on them. Like, I think his name is Blixie, I think. But anyway, there are other characters out there, possibly. But this is uh, the most popular one of the bunch. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to shut this down. Oops, damn it. Sorry about that, guys. Keep hitting the damn camera. All right, shut it down. All right. Now, we're going to look at this close. Now, when it comes to the horns, okay, you can move them, okay? Or, better yet, like that. But I prefer to keep it down. See, can't do that, so. Let's try it this way. Alright, let's move the arm out of the way. And you can do it that way too, see? Alright, I keep hitting the camera. I'm sorry, guys. Alright. But we're going to put him back into his normal position. Alright, turn the head. Alright, that's the way he's supposed to look, technically. Alright. Lord of Darkness, okay? It's a McFarlane figure. It's from a different series. There is, in fact, two different series of this figure. One where he's sitting on his throne. And this one here, and I'm not sure if there's any other ones out there, but as you can see, he's got the unicorn uh, horn because they cut it off. And the actual suit design here is very cool. I love that stuff right there. He's very muscular in nature, too. All right. All right. As you can see, he's got things hanging down. Very cool. All the way down to his hooves. Okay. And the arms. Okay, and you got your cape in the back. A very cool design on this cape. Look how cool that looks. The back of his uh, head and his neck is very muscular. Right. Kind of reminds me of the rock a little bit. The rock is huge anymore. But he's a cool actor. I like his, I like his acting. It's because of his personality. Especially was in uh, fast, the Fast uh, franchise. He did improve it. I know a lot of people will say, no, no, he didn't do it. But I think he did. Okay, because he was, he was the best part about it, in my opinion. All right. That, in fact, is my uh, figure based, McFarlane figure based on uh, Darkness. My Lord of Darkness. He's got like a goat-like legs, but he is very cool looking figure. He's a cool, in my opinion, he's one of the coolest looking devils that I've seen. This is from the 1985 movie, Legend, Ridley Scott. There is many different versions of it out there. There's an extended version, a the theatrical release version. Uh, I'm not sure which ones I got, but I got them sitting on the hard drive, and I watch them once in a while. Uh, Mia Sarah, absolutely gorgeous creature there, okay? Uh, Tom Cruise, very innocent in that movie. Nowadays, I like his acting, but the whole Scientology thing, I'm not a fan of that crap. I just... I just don't, I don't care for the religious part about it. Because it makes people stupid, really. <laughs> but anyway, long story short, I do like his acting. And he's obsessed with the Mission Impossible movies. They are good. Uh, and Top Gun Maverick, I'm waiting for that to come out. I think that's going to be a pretty good movie. We'll see how that handle, they handle that one. Okay? But anyway, I'm going to end this video here, and I think I said on my figures, again, about the Michael Myers ones. Uh, I probably got some of them wrong. Let me know in the comments section below. Uh, as for Freddy Krueger, I might collect some more. I don't know yet. Uh, but this is my Lord of Darkness, as well as the other figures. I will be jumping into my other figures, probably my Jason. They'll, they'll probably be next, or the uh, Tortured Souls. I'm not sure which ones. But anyway, this is Pumpkin Horror. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell because I will be pushing out some more videos. And sorry about it being so lengthy, but I like to talk.
when it comes to these particular characters and stuff. You guys have yourselves a good day.